वेलकम टू मेडिकल डायलॉग्स और डेली डोज ऑफ हेल्थ एंड मेडिकल न्यूज़ आई एम मिस्टर जमान एंड हियर इज व्हाट आई ब्रिंग टू यू ऑल फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ मेडिसिन if covid-19 booster dose is beneficial or not in lupus patients people with systemic lupus erythematosus or sle who received a booster dose of sars-cov-2 vaccine after full vaccination are roughly half as likely to have a subsequent breakthrough covid-19 infection a new study shows the finding researchers say should offer reassurance to more than 2 lakh americans who have systemic lupus erythematosus a condition in which the body's immune system mistake only attacks its own healthy tissues especially joints and skin immune suppressing drugs such as steroids needed to control symptoms of the disease place them at an increased risk of infections including sars-cov-2 published in the journal the lancet rheumatology online july 12 the study showed that at the end of the monitoring period that is 24th april 2022 44 vaccinated systemic lupus erythematosus patients had breakthrough infections with two needing hospitalization among those those with breakthrough infections 28 of 125 which is around 22% had received a booster while 16 of 38 or 42% had not researchers found that even those on immunosuppression who had not responded to the initial round of vaccination had an immediate rise in antibody levels after the administration of a booster shot previous research had shown that these antibody levels were lower among many initially vaccinated patients with rheumatic diseases including systemic lupus erythematosus who were taking immune suppressing drugs sparking fears of waning immunity to covid-19 over time however study results showed those with higher levels of antibodies needed to block the sars-cov-2 spike protein and prevent the virus from infecting human cells were no more protected from breakthrough infection than those with lower spike protein antibody levels Researchers concluded that study results offer people living with systemic lupus erythematosus clinical confirmation that vaccines are highly effective at guarding against severe COVID-19 despite their increased risk of catching the disease. How low-income countries have higher mortality rate in children with eye cancer. Children with eye cancer, retinoblastoma in a low-income country are at 16 times higher risk of dying at any time within 3 years of diagnosis than those in high income countries according to a new study published in the Lancet Global Health The research led by the International Center for Eye Health that is ICEH at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine that is LSHTM found stark differences in survival for children with retinoblastoma the most common form of childhood eye cancer between high income and low income countries Retinoblastoma is the most common and devastating eye cancer that affects children worldwide and early diagnosis and treatment are critical to prevent death or the loss of an eye in high income countries, Countries, this risk has dropped dramatically over the last few decades, with death now rare due to robust diagnosis and treatment pathways, including specialist retinoblastoma centers. The study, which is the largest and most geographically comprehensive on retinoblastoma to date, looked at survival data in 4,064 children with retinoblastoma from 149 countries, categorized as high, upper middle, low middle, and low income globally. These are estimated to be 50% of all new cases worldwide in 2017. The team analyzed the 3-year survival rate for these children following their diagnosis, finding that over 2/5, that is 40% of children die within 3 years of diagnosis in low-income countries, compared to fewer than 1 in 100, that is 1% in high-income countries. how liver disease and dementia are interlinked people who have non alcoholic fatty liver disease a build up of fat cells in the liver may have a higher risk of dementia according to a new study published in the july 13 2022 online issue of neurology the medical journal of the american academy of neurology researchers also found that people with this form of liver disease who also have heart disease or who have had a stroke may have an even higher risk of dementia For the study, researchers looked at 30 years of National Swedish Patient Registry records and identified 2898 people aged 65 and older who were diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Researchers then identified 28357 people without the disease who were matched for age, sex and city of residence at age of diagnosis. After an average of more than 5 years of follow-up, 145 people with non-alcoholic fatty liver 
disease or 5% were diagnosed with dementia compared to 1,291 people without liver disease or 4.6%. Researchers adjusted for cardiovascular risk factors like high blood pressure and diabetes and found that when compared to people without liver disease, people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease had a 38% higher rate of dementia overall. When looking specifically at vascular dementia caused by inadequate blood flow to the brain, researchers found people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease had a 44% higher rate than people without liver disease. Researchers did not find a higher rate of Alzheimer's disease. People with liver disease who also had heart disease had a 50% greater risk of dementia. Those who had liver disease and stroke had more than a 2.5 times greater risk of dementia. Researchers said that the study showed that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was associated with the development of dementia, which may be driven mainly by vascular damage in the brain. These results highlight the possibility that targeted treatment of this form of liver disease and co-occurring cardiovascular disease may reduce the risk of dementia. Whether or not there's a link between depression before stroke occurs. While depression is a common problem for people who have had a stroke, some people may have symptoms of depression years before their stroke. According to a study published in the July 13, 2022 online issue of Neurology, the medical journal of the American Academy of Neurology, researchers found that in people who developed a stroke, symptoms of depression preceded the onset of stroke and further worsened after the stroke. For the study, researchers looked at 10,797 adults with an average age of 65 and without a history of stroke at the start of the study. Participants were followed for up to 12 years. During that time, 425 people had a stroke. They were matched with 4,249 people who did not have a stroke but were similar in their age, gender, racial or ethnic identity and other health conditions. Participants took a survey every two years asking whether they experienced symptoms of depression in the past week, including feeling depressed, feeling lonely, feeling sad, everything was an effort and restless sleep. The more symptoms participants had, the higher their score. Researchers found that six years before the time of the stroke, people who later had a stroke and those who did not had scores roughly the same, about 1.6 points, but at about two years before the stroke, scores of people who have had a stroke started increasing on average by 0.33 points. Following stroke, depressive symptoms increased an additional 0.23 points for this group, reaching a total of about 2.1 points and they stayed that high for 10 years after the stroke. In contrast, the scores of people who did not have a stroke remained roughly the same throughout the study. When evaluating whether people could be considered clinically depressed, scoring 3 points or higher on the scale, researchers found a slightly different pattern of results emerged. At the assessment before the stroke, 29% of people who were about to have a stroke met the criteria for having probable depression compared to 24% of those who did not have a stroke. But at the time of the stroke, 34% of the people who had a stroke met the criteria for having probable depression compared to 24% of those who did not have a stroke. Those numbers were about the same six years after the stroke. This suggests that increasing symptoms of depression before stroke are mostly subtle changes and may not always be clinically detectable. But even slight increases in depressive symptoms, especially mood and fatigue related symptoms, may be a signal of stroke that is about to occur. Depression is not only a post-stroke issue but also a pre-stroke phenomenon. Whether these pre-stroke changes can be used to predict who will have a stroke is unclear the researchers concluded. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.